Hello. So I am sitting here on the bank of this river besides my hotel in Punakha. And today is the last day of my visit to Bhutan. In fact, it was a wonderful visit. A few days back, I decided for a solo travel. But why I was traveling solo is a different story. And we can talk about it some other day. But this trip was a solo, but it was in a way not solo. I joined a group in which there are 18 uh, people, and but I did not uh, know any one of them. But over a period of seven, eight days, we developed a good bonding, and it was a very good trip. More so because the country at our doorstep, a small country, is such a different place to stay. A very nice, clean and neat place. It is a carbon negative country, very pure atmosphere, cleanliness. More so the people are so good. In fact, if they give you something, they will not give it like this, like as we had over the money, they will give you like this. You know, very respectful, very courteous, very friendly, very helping. If you ask anybody that I am from this place and I do not have a local phone, can you uh, dial this number? Uh, and they will immediately come forward and they will help you uh, to give your phone or dial and for you and then talk in their local language so as to pro solve their problem. Now this is reflected by another thing that the culture of Buddhism is so good. In fact, when seven, eight days in which I have been here, I am so impressed the way of life, the Buddhism way of life and I feel like one must know it more and it will, it is a time which you pass with one philosophy I pass about seven eight days that you slowly start imbibing it and start following that and it becomes such a good life one of the great thing which I observed that the last king ruled over the country for about 27 years and then at the age of probably 54 he decided to renounce himself and he abducted his throne he went to a small place besides the palace where he stays and he has given his throne to his son who was hardly probably 20 plus years and now his son who is very young uh, they are ruling the country and uh, he has two kids lot of reforms in Bhutanese administration has been brought about his by his father in fact he sort of abolished the monarchy though it is the head is monarch and who is the king but now there are elections the, uh, the two parties First of all, uh, there might be many parties, but then uh, there's a first round of election in which uh, finally the two parties, number one party and number two, by way, their own way of counting, they are selected. And then, so people from these two parties only can fight the elections. So in the parliament, there is a, a, a government side and there's opposition, which is from other party. So this is another good point. And one of the very interesting issue, which I suppose uh, many of you may not be knowing, is that they have barred monarchy and the people from the family of monarchs and religious heads to participate in the process of election. They even cannot vote, forget about they fighting the elections. Because the king felt and they, they, that uh, sort of clause has been introduced in the constitution that the family of monarchy and the religious heads cannot vote and they cannot they, can, they cannot even vote forget about fighting the elections because they can change the path of the country they are powerful people and they can sway their votes by their one lecture or one speech on the other side or the other or different sides and that will bring in a lot of corruption so that is a very strange and very good point and the good thing is that there is a universal education, free education and free health services for everybody. Up to 12th there is free education and health facilities are totally free here. That is another very good point. The happiness index of this country is highest in their own terminology. They have different parameters. <laughs> There are a few dogs barking here in the roadside. So, uh, they measure their growth by their happiness index, for which they have their own parameters. And it is said that 
it is the one of the happiest country in the world or the happiest country in the Asia though the UN happiness index shows this country at the lower level compared to uh, what I said but when you come here you see that it is really a happy country this is one of the few countries which is carbon negative they sequest more carbon and they release less carbon another good philosophy which I realized for example there is a very important tourist place called Tiger Nest Monastery which is located on the cliff of a hill and uh, it is difficult to go there the hike is about uh, 1000 meters or around so and it is quite steep it takes about uh, uh, say, say it's about 5 kilometers on one side it takes about 5-6 hours uh, 4 5 hours at least to reach there and it's quite tiring it's not easy I went up to midway uh, because I decided that the time is less and I like to go back so now this is a tourist place a lot of foreign tourists are coming over they could have a lot of more revenue than what they are earning though the entry fees is 1000 rupees but uh, they have decided not to develop any road so that the vehicles can go there not to develop any ropeway not to develop any uh, helicopter kind of uh, facility over there because they say when you go there hiking and taking pains you really get the pleasure and that is a really good philosophy not only that it has a lot of good effects in the way that the destruction to the development does not take place making road developing roadways uh, helipads will cause of will be cause of lot of natural nature's destruction and how can you have a carbon negative country how can you uh, sort of uh, have the ideals of sustainable development by doing that plus you get the benefit and the pleasure and the happiness of going there after doing that hiking that gives you different sort of uh, happiness and self actualization so that is another very good point uh, which is there.